Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Saturday the 23rd of March 2024. For the final time for a while, I am Flat Cap Callum and I am hoping you are all very, very well. We've reached the point of me having a break. There'll be cheers, jeers, tears, who knows what. There'll be rejoicing. There'll be <laughs> whatever the opposite of that is. But um, this will be my last video for some time. Uh, so we go to Lincoln Saturday. Lincoln Saturday, what say you? Have you got anything up your sleeve for us to finish on a high? That would be absolutely brilliant, wouldn't it? Because it, you wouldn't plan going on a break after a 10-week nightmare run, which, to be fair, has now got to the point where, personally, the worst run I've ever been on. Statistically speaking, I am on my worst run I've ever been on in the last 10 weeks. Uh, it has not gone well at all, and that is not how you want to go for a run. When I, back when I started this channel, I had a cracking year in 2022, dips and ups and downs and whatever in 2023 and 2024 whether whether i've just lost it completely or whether the game's changed or somewhere in between or whether it's just a terrible run of variance i don't know i can't tell you what i'll tell you is i'm going on a break i plan to go on this break for a long time uh as i've said it's focusing on family and it's focusing on fitness that's what I'm, i need to do and that's what i'm gonna do um but yeah if you could write a script, you wouldn't write the run we've been on. Maybe if it's like, you know, a Hollywood a Hollywood movie type script. Here we go on Saturday, one last roll of the dice, the end of the film, and, and it all changes on Lincoln Saturday. That's what it would be if it's a Hollywood film, right? It's real life. Real life doesn't necessarily work like that. It can do. It does on occasion. But at the end of the day, folks, it's a fun very small horse racing YouTube channel for uh, predominantly people uh, people who follow UK and Irish racing. That's what it is, right? So if it ends up today, another losing day, that'll be very, very disappointing, right? And it'll be sad, it'd be a sad way to sort of sort of see you off, off onto a break on that kind of run. But it's life. That's how it, that's how it goes, right? Okay, there's worse things that can happen in, in life, right? And if you're watching this YouTube channel, because you're interested in following the horses, your life is significantly better than a lot of folk in other places in the world. And just be grateful for that, right? So personally, I might I might be down a few quid, but I've got lots of other things in life I'm grateful for rather than that few quid, right? And as an aside, the car, the wing mirror car, it's going. So by midday, uh, on Saturday, I will no longer own that car anymore, okay? Drastic measures have been taken. The car is, is got, I've had that car for a lot of years. No longer will that car be in my possession bef by the time the first horse goes. I had to take some measures in order to do this because I spoke to Terry and Steve. They got nothing for me this weekend. I've had to do it solo. Um, so I thought, how do we change the fortune? We'll move the car on, okay? So no more uh, wing mirrors of, of, of negativity knocking about my house, all right? Uh, there'll be a different car on the driveway uh, come the mid-afternoon. So that is, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's a bit of an update for you. So the plan for Saturday is no Yankees, no Canadians. No, we're not doing them. We are going to go a little bit different because it's the last day. So our, our £23 stake is what I should say, £23 stake for Saturday, for those of you who are <laughs> keen to follow. Um, I mean, maybe maybe I'll do negative, reverse psychology, right? So my plan is all of the horses to avoid, to so do the opposite of whatever I do. But um, £23 plan, four bets, and we have got the main bet, which is just over half the stake, is uh, a four-leg combination bet. Seven horses, four legs. That's the main bet. Outside of that, I've got an each way Trixie for the jumps, uh, each way double of the day, and a uh, combination double between the Spring Mile and the Lincoln. That's what I'm gonna be offering you today, all free of charge, as it always is. 
So uh, that that is it. And just to be clear, right? So I'm going to go on this break. I'm not going to rock back in six months' time with some paid subscription service. That's not how it's going to work. Okay. So just rest your rest your. I mean, who would pay after the last ten weeks? I mean, come on. But um, there we go. So we need to spin through. Uh, Friday's racing, and then we'll do Saturday's racing, and then we'll do Tips League, and then we'll do final thoughts. Final thoughts on the final video. That's what we'll do, folks. All right, okay. It, get your tissues if you need them, uh, or, or your rotten vegetables, whatever you need for this video. Okay, Friday. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't it was great, was it? But it, at least we got something in the end. Poetic Force, one out of the places, but Sky, you would have got that one uh, well backed in. Then we had no good, no good, no good non-runner. So it didn't really count for much, but you would have got a couple of quid back if you were sky betting. Um, and again, no good, but if you were sky betting, you would have had that with a non-runner and that place. So actually, sky betting would have made small profit. So if you were sky betting uh, on Friday, well done, you did make a small profit. Channel did not. Um, but yeah, the main horse was a non-runner, and then that was a place. And then the Dundalk bet, again, it looked pretty grim. Terrible, terrible non-runner. But then we managed to score a place on Special Angel. It drifted, so some would have got 25s. You could have got 28s, 33s, I think, in places. Uh, I think it was about six bookies paid it out. Sky, 365, Paddy, Betfair, Hills, and 888, I think, may have paid fourth place. Um, and then Anjar was very close. That, I mean, even, even that... Anjar was second. That was enough to get us two thirds of the money back in terms of channel stake. But um, if it got up on the line, there would have been a small profit for everybody, I think. But uh, yeah, two places with a non-runner in the end. So that is how we finished Friday. All right, that's Friday's gig. Let's talk you through the Saturday plan, the final Saturday plan. Caps on, special occasion, last day. Is it because of the horses? You'll have to find out. All right, here's the big main bet just made it a little bit different and interesting for the last day okay these this kind of stuff like not to the do these stakes um these are the type of thing that on a, on a decent day i will put together something like this sort of bet so this is not un, unusual for me but for the channel i try and steer away from this level of complication but it's the last day so here's the big doncaster bet Four legs, leg one, 120, and uh, we've got two of the shorter ones in there, Charon and Astral Bow. There's quite a lot of bookies paying three on this 120. It's only a seven runner race. So um, I put the best to place terms overall up here. But I, what I would say is um, that's the best overall place terms but I would probably compromise on some of the bigger field places in order to be able to get the third place on the uh, first and third legs, I think. So, Corals, Elabrooks, Betfred, uh, Hills, 888, I think are three on this one. Then we're gonna go the 225, uh, May Song, which is my number one pick, and then you'll see, regular viewers, Hort Zadar. Hort Zadar. So we've backed that horse the last two times at Newcastle. When Danny Tub Hope has ridden it, and there has been some comments from myself that Danny Tud Hope may not have fully tried on that horse. Now it hasn't subsequently dropped in the weights particularly, it's dropped a pound or two, but not much else. So my wondering is, now after me being a bit chastising of Danny Tud Hope, is did they try and maybe not push that horse the last couple of times? Because actually they wanted it to, to have a mark and get in to run in the spring mile and uh, and be competitive in the spring mile. Ground versus tar horse. If you look at the last two runs, Danny Tad Hope's been on it. It didn't run so great. Before that, it was running it was running nicely and for a nine year old. So yeah, I thought in on balance it was a it was a debate in my head, but on balance if you ignore the last two p positional finishes and in terms of the rating you might have got from that, if you go back before that, the horse has got previous. Um, so previous on the ground, previous at Doncaster. So Hortzadar is in. Then the three o'clock, this one's got shortened up a little bit. It was a really nice price. Still happy with the price. Um, it's the three o'clock in Doncaster. Just got the one leg. So it's a bit of a linchpin horse, this. We really need this to get in the top three. I mean, to be fair, if you got in the top three, nothing else did. It doesn't matter. But a day in Devon 
It's the only three-year-old in the race, but I think on if you actually look at weight conversion to uh, kind of performance, it's for some of them, it's, it's actually uh, 18 pounds to the good, as in it's 18 pound lighter to some of the experienced horses in this race. That's quite significant. So it's got to step up from, from what it's done in its two-year-old days, but it looks steadily improving. And if it's going to turn up on, on um, first time out this season, and runs to the form of last season with that weight allowance, it definitely looks like it could be a top three horse to me, despite it not being at the top of the market. And then the 335, um, Johan. Two years ago, we were on Johan. We were on Johan when it won at Goodwood. And I think I want, well, I don't think I am on Johan again. It's not in the same league as prices. We were backing it at 20 plus um, on the last two big handicaps that it's won. It's a few pound higher, but from a from a kind of top six place point of view, you'd like to think that one looks like it, there's not a reason why it shouldn't be competitive. It goes well fresh, goes well at Doncaster, goes well on the ground. Sylvester and Souza gets on well with the horse. Only four pound higher than than the two big handicaps. It's one that shouldn't be enough to to, to knock it out of the places. Whether it enough, it's good enough to get its head in front against some potentially more progressive horses, we will see. But Johan's in. And then from a value perspective, that's the number one horse of the day. So make or break really for us on, on this Saturday. One night thunder. Uh, Gemma Tutty uh, trains. Uh, not not a household name in terms of horse racing trainer. Uh, Laura Coughlin. Um, Coughlin. I'll never pronounce that name. Laura Coughlin. We'll go with Coughlin. <laughs> I can't say it. Laura, if you're watching, you're not. Sorry if I've got it wrong. Um she's claiming three pounds it's interesting i think um because the because the stable is small because the well not more smaller i would say because the jockey is less well known and the jockey is a uh, female those things will mean that the price is artificially flated in the market less people will look at that horse if you actually look at the two runs it did um, when the ground was on the softer side, it was one on heavy, one on soft last year, they were its best um, performances based on ratings. And there's still a bit of progression in there. It was originally trained by Richard Hannon, um, but I've got no reason to believe that, that Gemma Tutty can't train it on. And if you actually look at how her horses um, have been running so far in the last couple of weeks, very good um so the performances have been good my only niggle the only thing really that's the sort of the one sort of was black mark on it i'm just not con no I'm not convinced about um whether it's going to be the one first time out or not um her horses generally do need a run and that would be the only mild niggle on it but 66 to 1 it was absolutely clear value f for the for the day let alone the race um so I would have the horse, right? If, you, if that horse was ridden by Kieran Fallon and trained by William Haggis, for instance, I think that horse would be about 12 to 1. But it's not. It's, it's trained by Gemma Tutty and Laura Coughlin. So 66 to 1, that's in. So here's the bet. 18 times, so you put all the seven in the bet slip, and if you're in a betting shop, you could write it out like this. 18 times 15p win doubles. 18 times 15 pence win doubles 20 times 10p each way trebles eight times 10p each way four folds so we need at least two to win or three to place in order to get a return from the combination elements of the bet we're then going to have 50p each way singles on the two spring mile horses and the two lincoln horses in those boxes and we'll have a little 50p win single on a day in Devon. 12.80 is the st stake. As I said, from a place terms point of view, Sky are better, but Sky, at the time of this video, were only two places here. They may change it in the morning, 365 or another one, that two at the moment might change it to three. So Sky come out best, then I would be saying really, Hills and 888, because Sky come out best because they're gonna give you a seven here and a six here. That's over hills, but hills will give you that three. So if sky in the morning change and go three there, sky's the best bookie. If not, I actually would have personally put it on with hills. Um, and then you've got Coral, Lambrooks, Paddy and 365. Paddy um, 
you're, you're only going to get the twos on there. So although with Paddy, you're, you're going to get six on here. So Betfair and Paddy are six on here with Sky. I would rather negate that sixth place and have the third place on those two races. Then here, Sky seven, a lot of bookies are six. So that's the bet. Hopefully it makes sense. Label it enough. That's the big bet for the day. Then we've got three jumpers, 210 Newbury pretending, 315 Newbury Drumley Spud. I think that could be the springer in the market for Ben Pauling. Um, it's got Bo Moore and riding it, but I think that's because there's a family connection as opposed to it would usually have Keelan Woods or Ben Jones, but he's literally, each of them have got a ride uh, for Ben Pauling at Newbury. So one, one Ben Jones, one Keelan Woods and one Bo Morgan. He's got a bit of an act as Ben Pauling in these um, novice hurdles for, for bringing on a horse first time into the handicap. So um, we'll, we will try our luck, Drumley Spud. And in the 508 at Navan, at Navan? Navan. <laughs> oh no, last day, still can't get it. Uh, Joke Dancer, 16 to 1. Uh, formerly trained in the UK, uh, now with Patrick Gif Griffin. Patrick Griffin. Um, and who's riding it? Dara O'Keefe. Um, 25p each way, Trixie. Three times 50p each way, Singles. Sky Edge it because you can get four, but everyone else is three. Most bookies are five. All bookies are three. Five pound the bet, bet two. And then combo double on the Doncaster, Spring Mart and the Lincoln. So we've got the 225, we've got Maysong, Hortzadar, and I've added in one of the shorties, Titian. And then 335, One Night Thunder, Johan, and I've added in Alpha Krukis, or Krukus, we'll do that. Nine times 25 each way doubles, 450 is the bet. Uh, Sky come out best because you've got six and seven. Then Paddy, who are six and six. Betfair, six and six, but no bog. And then 365 come out next best because they are five and six and you'll get bog in the morning. So that's bet three. And we will finish off um, with double of the day. It's a Drumley Spud in the 315 Newbury. And in another bet, 335 Doncaster, one night thunder, 66 to one. 66 is about four, four or five bookies at the time of doing this. So um, make sure you have a little bit of a shop around. I think it's Paddy, Betfair, maybe 365, um, some of the smaller ones. 35 p each way, double, 70 pence, sky best, uh, because you get five and seven. Everyone else should be five and six. That is the double of the day. All right, so that's the final plan. That's the final plan. Then we'll go on to Tips the League. So Tips the League, if you want to enter the Tips the League, same rules apply as usual. You've got to be in by two o'clock. Nine races on ITV Racing to look through. So you've got to be on the ITV races. There's five races at Doncaster, the 123 to the 335. There's three races at um, Newbury, 210 through to the 315. And then there is the 130 at Banger on D. Not often on ITV Racing. The 130 at Banger on D um, is it makes the ninth race, although it's the first race, or second race. Nine races. Up to three horses, no decimal points. They've got to be on ITV Racing. Um, and you've got to be in by two o'clock. And you have to reply to the tips the lead comment on this video. In order to enter and be valid, you need to reply to the tips the lead comment on the video. There is an explanation with all the rules and how to write it in the clearest possible way for myself and Stephen. As this is the last video, I would like to do a final shout out of this juncture of time to Stephen, who volunteers his own time as well, I, I do, but he volunteers his own time to support me doing all the stats um, for the for um, the Tips League. Uh, he does it out of the kindness of his heart because he enjoys he likes numbers, he enjoys stats, he likes following the channel, even though he's not a massive betting guy himself. Um, but he, a follower of the channel he is. And uh, and yeah, so I would, I'm forever grateful for uh, for the support of the Tips to League stuff. Because I, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to run it as long as I have if it wasn't for Stephen and, and sending me all of his data and his stats as well. So thank you very much, Stephen King. Um, much, much appreciated. Um, and then... 
Final thoughts, final thoughts. Uh, this is the point where, like, if you don't like the waffle, I mean, you've probably already got annoyed anyway, but you could just go. You don't need to write a comment each time saying, oh, what's all the waffle about? It's part of what I do. If if you don't like waffle, go and look on Twitter, right? Do you know what I mean? It's YouTube, it's a video. I like this medium, it's what it's for, to talk and ramble on. You know, go get a copy of The Sun and see what Temple Gates picked in each race. Do that if you don't want the waffle. Um, anyway, so is Temple Gate still? I don't know. I don't. I don't. That was like a throwback. So I don't know if he's still going. Um, anyway, uh, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Right. So um, yeah. So so the plan is six months September at some point. Uh, I will come back in some capacity. What the capacity is, I don't know. If it's going, I don't know. I can't guarantee it's going to be the same as what it is. Um, I need to see what it is. But this is a planned break because what most people. You could sort of imagine, but you can't really until you do it. The life force this takes from you for doing it for this amount of time, right? And there's plenty of folk out there people have seen and followed that you you can see struggle from time to time with the regularity of, of doing videos like this um, and the kind of the commitment to keep keep going. It takes a toll on you, right? And uh, and so, yeah, this, this I need more than just a week off or, or whatever. So I just need a... a a break from online world, social media, any of that kind of stuff. Um, that That's what I need to kind of just separate myself from. So I've got lots of thoughts about do I set up little chat groups and that kind of stuff. And I came to the conclusion I'd just be too tempted to be in there interacting and things. I just want to have a, a mental break from all of this kind of stuff so I can really reflect, go through statistics, think about what I'm doing, think about what I want to do with it going forward. Um, you know whether that's I come back and do something regular or whether that's I come back and do the odd video now and again within the six months as I've said I'm not fully ruling out popping up on certain days with certain things if it's something I particularly like um, or or a particular festival maybe health warning though I know lots of people will be interested about the Grand National if you've been following the channel for the last two Grand Nationals you'll have heard me, me, heard me go on about this Statistically speaking, the Grand National is the worst race usually to have a bet on um, in the calendar. Unless you're talking about like a 25 race maiden at Punchestown that's got three places or something like that. The Grand National is, is, is a pretty poor race. It might be the most popular race to have a bet on. It is not the best race to make money on. Used to be like a, a better race. You know, more more bookies, but, you know, paying eight places, that kind of stuff. If you're only getting six places, which is what a lot of bookies will pay, and some will only do five, there is a slight improvement this year because the, they've restricted it down to 34 runners from 40 runners. Or, yeah, it was, has been 40. Um, so six places in 34 runners. Um, that, that is slightly better. But it's only like a one in five point something, right? So if you look at these seven runners I'm putting out, seven runner races, three places in a seven runner, you're almost twice as likely statistically, rough maths, twice as likely to get a horse framing in a seven runner paying three places as you would do um, in the... So, yeah, no, no, no more, more than... Wait, I'm talking nonsense. Way more than twice as likely. Three times as likely, Um to do that right so three places in seven six in four yeah four, four, four. my maths have gone fried now what i'm saying is people don't might might walk past a, a seven runner race paying three places they're brilliant they're really really good the grand national six places and 34 is not so the only way you may see me pop up for grand national is if i've got a particularly strong view on something that is at least 40 to 1 that would be where I would need to be in order for me to think, do you know what, I will do a Grand National little video. If I'm about like ratings and views and all that sort of stuff, of course I should do a Grand National video, right? It absolutely spikes up through the roof. But, you know, personally, it's not often I'll be back in just one horse in the Grand National. I'll have half a dozen. Um, and in respect of the best horse doesn't always win because sometimes the best horse gets hampered, gets pulled up gets a knock, whatever. So the better horses finish at the front, but the best horse doesn't always win, is what I would say. So, um, and I know that's true of a lot of jump racing, or you could argue it's the truth on the flat racing and from draw bars and that kind of stuff. But in the Grand National more so. So it's unlikely I will pop up for the Grand National, much to the disappointment of some, I'm sure. 
Um, but yes, I'd need to be in a position where I particularly like something at particularly at least 40 to 1 across the board in order for me to think, yeah, maybe, maybe I will pop up with something. But as for other festivals, I don't, I don't know. What I'm saying is I'm not making any guarantee other than at some point in September, I'll do a video. And if, whether I do stuff in between that time, might do. And certainly have talked about doing some of the, the kind of th- things you call like evergreen videos, that, you know, how-to videos that then once you put up, they can kind of last and re- be rewatched forever uh, when, unless things change. So that, that would be something. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. So I've said it last few vids. If, if you want to um, know when I'm coming, then press the subscribe button. That's the easiest thing. F- from a comms point of view, what I would say as well is um, I'd, about a week ago, I had to change my email address for the channel. So it mo- it changed over. It's now flatcapcallum at outlook.com, I think. It's in the description of this video, so you can check it. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants to email me about anything, then I'm still open to that. So uh, the email address will exist. Um but anyone who's previously emailed me prior to like about a week ago, um, I won't have your contact details um, because they'll have the old email address basically got retired. Um, it was something that I paid for and then didn't renew, so I don't have access to it anymore. So um, yeah, if, if if you've emailed me previously and you think I've got your details, I might not actually have your details at all because I need it on the, uh, the flatcapcalibreoutlook.com um, email address. So. Uh, yeah, if you want to email me about anything, then feel free to do that. Uh, if it's abuse, I'll just delete it. But some some people take the time and effort to do that, you know. Uh, it depends on whatever you're into. So uh, yeah, feel free to do that. Um, that was that is live now, and that won't that isn't what I've paid for. I've just set that up. So uh, yeah, I kind of I don't even know why I ended up paying for it. It was a bit anyway. Use that one. It's in the description. Um, and yeah, the, the other thing I was going to say. I mean. It's not, you know, it's not goodbye forever, uh, but it does feel a bit, I do feel a bit sad and it, it does feel a bit of a moment. Um, and just be, I mean, the whole thing's bonkers to me. The whole thing is bonkers, right? I, 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 what, January 2022 is when I started and I'd, I hadn't really, I wasn't massively into YouTube really. And then I was looking a bit kind of October, November, December and looking about horse racing. I was interested to see what people will actually put out on YouTube because... It was something that obviously I'm into, and I thought I was really surprised. There just the, the sort of the lack of stuff out there, um, and there really wasn't much. And the stuff that was there, a lot of it was dodgy pirates trying to do do things. And at the time, and I've, I've said this a few times, at the time when I looked, uh, was looking then the best channel out there was Connor Five Hundred, and the reason for that, in my view, is and I've never met him, is. Uh, was transparent so super transparent so if it won he won he lost he lost he recorded statistics and i think statistics are key because far too many people don't have them and then will tell you they've won when when actually overall they've lost even general punters think they've won when actually overall they've lost so the fact it had tr- transparent statistics th- those kind of things so he, he was coming across as an honest guy recording statistics it won't pay, you know, charging for anything. That that's what I saw, and there was really not many people out there at the time who had statistics for things. And if they had statistics, then it was a bit fast and loose with the truth. Like you know, I'm going to take the best price. The best price either was the price I'm going to tell you this on this video that you might not have ever been able to get, or the starting price, which whichever one is bigger, that's the one I'll record for the stats. That stuff still goes on, right? And that's that's how a lot of people come out with statistics to say that they're ahead when in fact they're not ahead right so that that is a true true thing that exists so that was why i've always tried to make it nice and clear and fair about how i do statistics because there's there's the kind of people out there so anyway i i was talking to mrs fc and in the end she was like well why don't you why don't you do your own channel and i was like to be honest <laughs> as, as much as you might see me here talking confidently I'm not someone who ever really wanted to put myself out there in social media. That was that was not any no interest or intention from that, and no interest or or, or want or desire to, to to make a living from YouTube, right? So if, I've said this a few times. If you want to make a living, you go and do stuff like you know, like produce rewatches of Britain's Got Talent videos, or there's loads of stuff out there. The big thing is like people just like 
doing like you've been framed clips, but then making it look like, you know, going to the beach and then doing loads of, loads of you've been framed clips from other people on the beach, but then you make it look like you, you're watching them and then you're reacting to them. That's the whole thing. People love those things, right? If I wanted to make a career on YouTube, <laughs> I'd just go and do stuff like that, right? Not interested in it. Um, I just felt like there's an opportunity for, for me to share what I do. And what I do, I knew, is very different to what most other folk do at least when I, you know talking about Connor, he, he might put a, a bet out with four or five horses in it, right? And he might do um, combination double bets and that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff I was doing. But most of the people, what you see is you see a one or two or three or maybe a double if you're lucky, and generally short prices. That's what I saw. And I thought, well, if I'm if I'm going to do this, then it'd be interesting to see what people think because what I do is much bigger prices, and I do multiple bets. And most people in the industry will tell you. You don't want to be backing outsiders and most people in the industry will tell you that batting on multiples is a mugs game it is if you are not having value in what you're doing clearly how clever am i in the last 10 weeks it's not not gone well has it but over the course of two and a bit years we're all right um so yeah i, I didn't know what people were going to think or watch and then slowly i kind of picked up this following and Norrie was the first one. I'll always remember that. Norrie was the first person. Well, first person who said something nice. There was there was a somebody who was less nice before that. But um, Norrie was the first person who said something nice. And then we went on this nice little run where, you know, it was it was the February after I started in the January because the first Saturday I was I tanked. Um, but then uh, yeah, the February picked up been and been and gone at two hundred and fifty to one placed in some novice hurdle. And that sort of set a bit of a tone for something nobody else would be picking. And there was a few 100 to 150 to 1 shots in that first year that really struggled to find since. That, I mean, 250 to 1 shots that you actually think have got a chance don't grow on trees, right? Some of them get in the frame, but not hard to find. Uh, and then we went on and on a bit of a journey and then Cheltenham went brilliantly well and um, didn't add the win of the Grand National. But then Ascot went really, really well. And then Galway Goodwood went really, really well. And it was all going brilliantly that first year. And then I got to York Ebor Festival and had an absolutely awful week. It was awful. Um, so that was that was that was sort of the low point. And then we hit, hit basically went into September and October and we're hitting we hit three lucky fifth two lucky fifteens with three winners on, one at Charles and one at Kempton. Um and then it went a little bit of a little dip and then we got to like Christmas week and it seemed to be pretty good. So the first year was brilliant. And then the second year it was such a horrible start for the, for a few months. Cheltenham didn't go great. And they literally went through the festivals. Cheltenham didn't go great. Ascot didn't go great. Um, Galway Goodwood was okay. And then York Ebor Festival was actually not bad. Um, and then it wasn't really till the latter part of, of, of 2023 where we picked up some nice results, particularly with some nice big doubles. Although through the flat season, for those who have been around long enough, you remember I, would, I did a whole bunch of stats around how many combination doubles have I done on a Saturday between two races and the, the statistics were so ridiculous about how many of those combination doubles I'd had where the, in the first leg I had a winner but then couldn't get anything in the second leg so the flat season was pretty good um, and then yeah we were doing good we'd had a good run up um, November December in 2023 really really good result in, 20, in November and then yeah first couple of weeks this year was was all right we were up a little bit and then the last 10 weeks absolutely atrocious um so in that time just the channel was kept growing every single week i've, I've gained subscribers which I, it just blows my mind so i started off as a bit of a will anybody watch it and now i've got to the point where you know in terms of like you know one man band uh horse racing channel I, I'm, I'm up there with the with the most watched stuff and it's like it's just just random like <laughs> it's random right but what the, the thing this is obviously a long old ramble anyway but you would not expect anything less would you um the thing that i think it comes down to is that i like to believe not everybody there's about two percent of people who, who this doesn't apply to but most people who have watched who have stayed watching what they've seen is somebody who is trying so i'm trying somebody who's got no intention of taking your money off you or pulling the wool over your eyes which is absolutely true and when i say try and try try my best with the horses and trying to be a decent human being in life and actually 
what I've learned, and I've learned this from when I've met some of the people as well, from when I went to Kempton and Dundalk that follow the channel, that the horse racing sometimes is secondary. And actually, just having a nice vibe and a safe little corner of, of, of the internet where generally pe people can come, express a view, put their horses down, and there's not 82 other people that are going to go troll them and tell them that this and that and the other. We've had the odd one or two. I mean, you know, we've had the odd one or two that have got about 82 different faces. I mean, it's nuts. But, but generally speaking, those people are few and far between. And I took the decision early doors that if you're going to be going to be rude to anybody, any other follower, or you're going to be rude to me or disrespectful, then just remove that person. And that's generally fostered a culture where people have been able to share their thoughts uh, about their their selections, and particularly be supportive of people. So, you know, it, it, again, as much as you know, I'm really grateful for for Norrie for being the first person and. Um, Stephen for, for all the stuff with the stats you know my absolute stalwart Susan and Shane who, who put up tips almost every single day and put themselves out there that you know you, you don't know their faces you don't know who they are but they, they're trying every day and, and I've never met them I'd love to meet them but I've never met them and to me they're just they're just decent folk sharing what they're doing and and have a similar style of betting as I do um and so sometimes you'll find some good, some similar stuff. I mean, I'd be interested to see what, what Susan pops up for Saturday because she's had a couple of really nice winners this week, at nice prices. Um, so, yeah, and and this is the thing I think the people who are detractors from the channel, who, who you know just just sort of see a losing run and see that like just think I'm terrible. Um, I don't think we'll ever understand that actually for a lot of folk, and I and and this is the thing that I. Uh, it surprised me, but I, I take um, very seriously and responsible for, and it's, and it's very humbling. There's just people who, who actually, it's a safe place to hang out on YouTube. And some of them don't even really care about horse racing. It's just a nice vibe on the channel. And I try and do things, yeah, apart from when I'm having the odd really down day when, for, when it's gone terrible, I try and do things in a light-hearted way, and that appeals to folk. So... Yeah, I've learnt a lot about um, not just YouTube, about life on here because I, I absolutely thought before doing this there were there were more more terrible people on YouTube than than there actually is. Um, and if you build a place for nice people, then more nice people come. And so, I, I guess my my kind of final thought on the final thought <laughs> is is right if you've got you know you've got anything about horse racing this if you've made a few quid on some of the nice bets or over the long period of time then then well done to you i mean we're like i don't know i know that you know, we're obviously on this bad run but you know still knocking somewhere around about the three grand mark in terms of profit on the from the channel from that two years and two months about 20 percent um but you may have got some you may have won something you may have taken a tidbit away whatever but what i would really want people to to think about this might get a bit weird and profound i don't know right because i see i see other people like <laughs> using these opportunities to talk about conspiracy theories I'm not into that just every day try and be the best version of you and try try and be a decent human being right most people 99.9 .9 of people don't wake up in the morning and think i'm gonna be an arsehole today i'm gonna i just want to be an arsehole that's not how people think Equally, there's not many people who wake up each day who go, I want to try and be a best version of myself and be a decent human being today. Most people fall in the middle. So the most of the people that you meet in life who are arseholes aren't arseholes. They've just got some stuff going on and they don't really think about the impact that they have on other people. So, you know, whether or not that is, you take the opportunity, you know, to just smile at someone in a supermarket, you know, or help somebody with a bag or you know somebody ahead of you in a shop and they haven't got enough money to pay for them you pay whatever a couple of quid or whatever just just try and be a decent human being and um and then that that's 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 my last word right nothing about horse racing just just try your best to be a decent human being and just accept that if someone's someone's a bit of a bit of an ass. Maybe it's maybe it's just because they don't understand that 
that they they can choose to be a decent human being any situation right life's horrible sometimes but in any decent any situation you've always got a choice about how you choose to do things you've got a choice about your attitude a lot of people don't understand that but you can choose you can choose to be feeling well what can i do in this situation even if it's terrible or you can sit and think i'm going to be angry and, and be a mean person which one of those things ultimately makes you go to bed feeling better about life that's what i'd say to you so that is me signing out uh, and i will return at some point when that will be i don't know there'll at least be a video in september that's what i'm saying that's my commitment to you to my followers and thank you very very much from the bottom of my heart for everybody who has, has followed and supported the channel and got it to where it's, it, it is now um the absolute sadness in, in my in my art is is that yeah that, that i'll miss the, the interaction of the people on the channel and and i hope that the people on the channel have got something from it can find somewhere else to go and get so that's something from um instead of here so thank you very much it's been a pleasure See you on the other side. Cheerio.